It's hard to imagine pop culture without Batman, specifically the Dark Knight persona, without a grim, dedicated Batman capable of taking down anything from grifters to gods with sufficient prep time. And that Batman would have been impossible without Denny O'Neill. Last week, Denny passed at the age of 81, so this week I'm looking at his vast contributions to both Batman and the medium of comics as a whole. Hi, I'm Dan Umthen, and this is the Doomcast. <laughs> Denny O'Neill was a Midwestern Missouri kid, born and bred growing up along the same Mississippi River coast as Mark Twain. And as the editor of a newspaper in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, one of his summer columns about the resurgence of comic books caught the eye of another lifelong comic fan and future writer Roy Thomas. On a whim and at the behest of Roy Thomas, O'Neill took Marvel's writing test in the early 1960s just as Stan Lee was turning over writing duty to others. So he had a brief stint writing for Marvel where he first collaborated with lifelong creative partner, the equally legendary Neil Adams. But it was at DC where Denny and Neil shined. Uh, one of Denny's first assignments was with Mike Sikowski at Justice League, but it was his work with Mike Grell on Green Lantern, Green Arrow that was the beginning of an elevation of comics to literature in the public mindset. Now, of course, comics had had literary merit before, and even DC and Marvel comics delved into social issues, but Green Lantern Green Arrow was something new in a gradually post-comics code environment. Most seminally, the issue of Green Arrow's sidekick, Roy Harper, developing a drug addiction. And it was the street-level grittiness that O'Neill lent to his work alongside Neil Adams on Batman. Uh, where he had made Green Arrow into a hippie and an agent of left-wing social justice, he made Batman a fastidious and dark warrior against street-level crime, which he felt was a return to the root of the character. But Denny really served to transform him instead. Uh, the introduction of Ra's al Ghul, the focus on detective work, moral dilemmas, powerful, sometimes horrific and gothic fights with a much less playful, much more sadistic Joker transformed the campy Batman of the 1950s and 60s into a Batman who future writers like Frank Miller, who worked with O'Neill on his very first Batman story, made him into a virtually perfect human and unstoppable crime-fighting machine. And upon another brief stint at Marvel in the late 80s, he re-returned to DC to pen and edit more Batman books, but not before being asked to give a name to the leader of a group of space robots for a comic Marvel was producing based on a line of Japanese toys. And so rather than his Japanese name of Convoy, Optimus Prime was born. But that second act at DC was a huge one. O'Neill oversaw the editing of The Death of Jason Todd, collaborated on writing, and edited the transformative Nightfall story arc, featuring Bane breaking the back of Batman and the introduction of Azrael to the Bat family. And in a weird twist of fate, O'Neill penned the novelizations of Batman Beyond and Dark Knight Rises, uh, they themselves film adaptations of Batman arcs that he had written. And on a personal note, I did get to meet him a few years ago, one of the gentlest guys I've met in comics. I'd always heard that he was very boisterous as a personality, but he seemed quieter and more subdued. He was very willing to talk to anybody at length who spoke to him. Uh, I was even horribly wrong about a specific issue of Green Lantern Green Arrow that I brought to him to sign, and he was way too gracious to even correct me. And while it's sad seeing the passing of great writers and great artists who made an indelible mark on comics, the modern American folklore, the power of Batman as a symbol on the collective American and global subconscious cannot be underestimated. And Denny O'Neill bears no small share of the credit for the Dark Knight and for the state of modern comics. Thank you for everything, Denny. And thank you for watching. This has been the Doomcast. We'll see you next week. <laughs>